love Caribbean travel and soft sand between your toes or the taste of smooth rum and getting lost in island beauty? If so, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Caribbean Castaways Podcast. You are about to embark on a journey where you will learn about everything the Caribbean has to offer, from the best beaches and places to stay, to the best restaurants and things to do. Everything you need to know to get the most out of your vacation and become a salty Caribbean castaway. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts, Caribbean travel bloggers, Rum Shop Ryan and Castaway Crystal. Hello, Castaways. Welcome back to another edition of the Caribbean Castaways podcast. Castaway Crystal here. I'm back. My voice is back. Sounds so much better. So much better than last week. I mean, it still cracks here and there, but I can at least talk and not be completely sounding under the weather and scratchy voice. So I'm back. Thanks for having me. And next to me, as always, Rum Shop Ryan. Hey, Castaways. I hope you are well today. If you don't know who we are or what we do, we are Caribbean travel bloggers. And we are here to help you have the best Caribbean vacation possible. And we do that through travel tips and videos, blogs, and this podcast right here. And actually, it's just been Crystal and I on the first five podcasts. We are on podcast five. We're on number five already. It's no, going fast. That's right. So we are going to start to introduce some interviews with some people down in the Caribbean and it's going to be super fun. We're going to hear from the locals and from the business owners and what makes their property, their charter, their hotel so good. So we want you guys to get that information firsthand. Yeah, we can't wait to get those started. That's right. So uh, like we said, this is episode five, and we're going to be talking all about some rules and unique laws of the Caribbean, some some things like etiquettes and things you that will definitely help save you some embarrassment, some headaches, and probably a little bit of cash. Yeah, definitely. No one wants to be an annoying tourist when they go on vacation. Um, you know, it's good to know the ways of the land that you're in, to know how to be polite and proper etiquette. And also, nobody wants to be behind bars and get arrested <laughs> and get fined. You know, you want to save your money for the fun things for your trip. Beach and bars. not get arrested. That's right. So All that's right. what we're here to help you. <laughs> All right. So the first one is a given, and it is a a act in being polite. So anytime you walk into a place, a restaurant, meet a person, always remember to say good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Uh, Even say good night when greeting somebody, like if it's seven or eight o'clock and you're meeting somebody at the restaurant, say good night, how are you? It's just something that everybody does. It really helps things move smoothly. I've actually made this mistake because I am always in a hurry, it seems like. I really need to learn how to slow down. Crystal says, Ryan, you're in the islands. Slow down. Yeah, he's really hard (laughs) to get on island time. It's like he loves the islands, but he's like, go, go, go. It takes me a good five or six days to get on island time. So the one situation I remember, uh, we were at Belongo Bay Resort there on St. Thomas. And I walked into the restaurant there and I go, I need a table for four. And the hostess there goes, good evening. How are you? And I immediately felt, you know, three inches tall and super embarrassed. So obviously, you know, I am so sorry for my manners. Good night. How are you? Uh, And things went a little smoother after that. Right. Yeah. Things will definitely go a long way and a lot better for you. Just having the proper etiquette of just saying good morning, good afternoon and good night. And even like sometimes just saying hi just really isn't enough. And I still get in that mode because I'm just like, you know, on the stage like, hi, and I'm like, hi, good morning. Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> like, I'm kind of a spaz. Yeah. yeah just <laughs> but you just, you good, know, you want to. Good wanna, morning, good afternoon, and good you night. You want to do it right. And, you know, when you do that, it goes a long way and they appreciate it. They, they really do. So the next one is something that you see on bumper stickers and Jimmy Buffett songs. But Island Time is a real thing. It really is. Like we were just talking about, Ryan has a hard time Gotta getting into down. that slow pace because in the States, we're always in a hurry. Go, go, go. Get out of my way. Yep. Kind of feel or like, you know, when's my meal coming now? <laughs> you know, but in the islands, they just move slower and it's not really being rude. It, they're not being rude. They're not giving bad service. That's just how it is. Yeah. So if you're used to like a server coming up as soon as you sit down at the restaurant, that's not always the case. That, that's absolutely correct. 
you know, I go online a lot, look at reviews and TripAdvisor and, and things like that. And a lot of times I see these one and two star reviews on these restaurants and things like that in the Caribbean. And it's from people going, I wasn't greeted for 10 minutes or it took 30 minutes for my meal to come out. The service was so bad. I'm like, I actually feel so bad for the restaurant because these people probably don't know that island time is a real thing. They're in they're in a, a, a New York minute. They're not doing the Caribbean minute. Right. And so always remember, island time is real. Right. Slow Just down. Slow down. Don't be in a rush. Enjoy the scenery. Enjoy your company. Just enjoy being on the islands and not being at work or in your normal routine. You know, Just soak it all in. Totally. Totally. So this next one is might be a law, might not. So we don't have all the information, but I remember hearing about this the very first time, first few times I went down to the U.S. Virgin Islands and me being a little bit younger and dumber, I got easily excited about being able to have a beer and drive around the island. So all the locals kind of do it. You know, you can actually stop on the side of the road, grab a beer and drive around and have that open container in your car. So it's kind of a, a nice way to just kind of relax and, and, you know, go around the island. But you cannot, let me repeat this, you cannot be drunk and drive around the island. That is a big no-no. But I, I think it is still, you know, on the books as you can't drink and drive, but it is not enforced really in the Virgin Islands. They will very quickly, however, give you a ticket for being on your cell phone and driving. So I remember, I think we were in Cruise Bay and there was a cop in front of me and I had a beer at the time and I took a big swig of my beer right behind the cop and obviously nothing's going to happen. Um, it's just part of something down there. But if I was on my cell phone texting or calling, that guy probably would have pulled me over in a heartbeat. Yeah. So just keep that in mind that there are some laws. They're kind of lackadaisy about it in some ways. I like but, that. You lackadaisy. Know, yeah. But just, you know, kind of watch what everybody else is doing. Ask around with the locals to see what's really the real deal. Because, again, we don't want you guys to get arrested. We don't want you to get in trouble. And as always, if you're just doing one roadie, but don't, you know, get drunk and drive. You know, for sure. That should go without saying, but just want to give that little disclaimer. <laughs> you as never well. know. Um, next, don't wear camouflage. Um, camouflage print is banned in a number of Caribbean islands, such as Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. The reason why camo is not allowed is because they don't want civilians mistaken for police officers. Unfortunately, there have been times where people have dressed up in the camo. They have represented themselves as police officers, and they've unfortunately robbed people. So to try to save people from these kind of you know, scary circumstances. They just say no camouflage. Nobody can wear camouflage to keep everybody safe. Um, so if you don't want to get fined, keep those cute camo capris at home. <laughs> I remember I used to have a cute camo skirt and camo socks, but I just, you know, just I, leave those things at home. I think those trends have moved on a little bit, but, um, I know, but, but <laughs> it's still kind of cute. You still can't help but feel kind of tough. I still, have camo. My, I still have my camo shorts. They're in the closet right now. I'm, I'm not sure if I can quite fit in them like I used to, but, right. uh, I will not wear those to the island. Yeah, so, so good. Keep tip, your Crystal. camouflage at home. Thank you so much. All right. Another tip when you're in the islands to definitely know about is, so bathing suits are meant for the beach. There are places, so every island's a little different, but it's just kind of something you should know is don't walk through town in your bikini or guys, you know, put on a shirt as you're walking through town. The, and your a, shoes. Yeah, that's right. There are a lot of Caribbean islands that are a lot more conservative than some, some of the other islands and the states and things like that. So you can actually get fined $270 in Grenada if you're walking around town in your bathing suit. So don't listen to our good friend Kenny Chesney on this one. So no shoes, no shirt. There's probably going to be a problem. So just throw on that cover up, throw on a t-shirt when you're walking through town and you're going to be just fine. Right. And since we're on the topic of clothing or lack thereof, <laughs> Um, not every island is nudity friendly on the beaches. For some reason, I've had friends and um, just random people on Facebook think just because you're on a beach or an island that you could just take your top off or it could be a nude beach. And that is not the case. Definitely not. Fresh French islands. Yes, they have designated areas or designated beaches that are nude or topless beaches. 
But for the Dutch, for the USVI, for the British Virgin Islands, that is a big no-no. They do not condone nudity on their beaches. That's right. So if you want to take off your top, ladies, go to the French islands. Viva la France. (laughs) But cool story. So um, we were anchored off of Colombier Bay on St. Bart's during an Island Windjammers cruise. Amazing spot. It is a French island if you don't know anything about St. Bart's. But there's some really great trails around that beach. So I was just kind of hiking around the hill by myself. I saw this couple coming and it was it was completely random, but you know, a lady didn't have her top on and it was no big deal. It, they were a French couple and I thought it was a little weird because they were hiking and not on the beach, which would have seemed a little bit more normal, but uh, they passed me and I just said, bonjour. And they said, bonjour. And that was it. It was just like, I made a mental note is like St. Bart's is pretty open. Yeah, you can <laughs> hike topless. Personally, I don't think hiking topless is that yeah, there's some stick- desirable to me. I'd yeah. be afraid, you know, I'm kind of clumsy. So what if I <laughs> fall or what if I run into a thorn bush? Like, I don't want my girls getting all. Yeah, no, no scrapes. You know, scraped up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely an interesting thing about uh, being topless and not topless in the Caribbean. A- another one, which I would probably get in trouble for every now and then if I didn't have my head on my shoulders is the use of profanity on some of the islands. So specifically, St. Kitts and Nevis. They have a strict law about using profanity in public. Um, There is a unique, I wouldn't say unique, but a uh, kind of a newsworthy story. Uh, Rappers 50 Cent and DMX, they went down there to do um, a pretty, like they they always have this big uh, music festival down there. <laughs> That's right. That's my man 50 right there. So he was actually arrested and fined $1,100 for using profanity during the music festival. I'm pretty sure he can afford the $1,100. He could. And he actually didn't have any, you know, Bad, bad mojo, blood with bad it, bad blood, mojo yeah. with them after it happened. But it kind of makes me laugh because if you hire rappers, 50 Cent <laughs> and DMX, because DMX had an issue too, and they, I think they find him as well, to a music festival, it's like, did you listen to their music? You, because You know it's going to come out. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, definitely uh, remember not to curse, you know, even when driving. I know driving can be frustrating. I always get, you know... A little heated on the streets here in Florida, but it's a different vibe down in the Caribbean. I probably wouldn't yell out the window like sometimes I do here. So I will definitely keep uh, my mouth to myself on St. Kitts yes. and Nevis. Yeah, try to keep the profanity to a minimum, yep. especially in public. Lots of bleeps. Yes. Um, here's an interesting one from Trinidad in Tobago. That's one we have not been to yet. Um, it's against the law to air dry your laundry if it's hanging over a street or in like facing a street. So for example, if you're at a resort and your balcony is hanging over a street, you don't, you can't hang your towels or your bathing suits off the balcony to dry. Um, you could possibly get fined $200. So keep your bathing suits, keep your towels inside to so dry about, them off. What about air drying my underwear out? Nobody wants to see your underwear. <laughs> so <laughs> I will keep my underwear inside then. <laughs> so funny. And our final odd law is odd law. That's a tough one to say. Our final odd law uh, is going to come from us from the country of Belize. So the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries has implemented a kind of a funky law that requires everybody on a boat to have a sport fishing license. Even if you're a young child or grandma who does not intend to fish, or even if you're just on a charter snorkeling and you have no intention of fishing whatsoever, they actually require you to have a fishing license. So weird part, if you are actually fishing from the beach or on land, you do not need a fishing license. So only if you are fishing from a boat or if you're on a boat, they probably don't know what you're doing out there. So they just say, everybody needs a fishing license. So I thought that was kind of a unique one as well. Yes. So there you go, Castaways. You've just learned eight new laws to keep you safe, avoid getting fined, and stay travel savvy when you're island hopping in the Caribbean. That's right. Thank you so much, Crystal. 
Um, Castaways, we would love to see you rocking some Castaway swag. So if you didn't know, we actually have some Caribbean Castaway koozies and stickers and things like that. And if you would like to grab some and help support our content, please visit our brand new Patreon page. You can choose uh, a few different levels of support. A few of those have swag. There's a private Facebook group where we can actually help you plan your trip, give you recommendations on hotels and restaurants and charters and things of that nature. And we can, we'll actually give some people shout outs at the end of our videos, like in the credits. You know, thank you so much to to Bob and Jim and all all you all all the Arthur castaways for out there. listening. <laughs> right, right. So definitely go check the link out in our page if you guys want some swag and to kind of join this exclusive club of the Caribbean castaways. And as always, please let us know how you're listening today. Uh, take a quick screenshot of the podcast player that you're using. It might be Apple Podcast or Google Play or iHeartRadio. But take a screenshot of that and then go to Instagram, find us on there, and then send us a DM of that screenshot. And we would love to send you a personal thank you guys. And we might, probably, will even share it in our Instagram stories because we love giving you guys props because without you guys... We would not be we're doing... We're just talking to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so we, we really not, need you to listen. <laughs> we would not be doing what we're doing. So thank you. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you for listening. Yeah, Thank you again. And if you like what you hear today um, and love Caribbean travel, then please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. We would be so appreciative. And if you want more Caribbean travel, head on over to our CaribbeanCastaways.com or our Caribbean Castaways YouTube channel to get even more Caribbean island adventures. That's right. And if you didn't know, she said CaribbeanCastaways.com and not RumShopRyan.com. So yeah, that changed. The switch did happen, guys. So don't be confused. We are still RumShopRyan and Castaway Crystal, but I just thought that the domain name should change. So we are now CaribbeanCastaways.com. Com. I kind of like it a little better. Yeah, it's it's more of an us <laughs> thing and not a me thing, which I absolutely agree with. So, so thank you again, guys, and cheers. Have a great afternoon. Cheers, guys. See you in the islands. Or day, or morning, or night, <laughs> wherever you are. Bye, guys. Bye.